Today I thought I would show you the greeting cards I made. Um, when I worked in a bookshop a couple of years ago, we weren't allowed to read the books, um, obviously, because, you know, we were meant to be doing other things. Um, but it was a weird experience for me to be in a bookshop, to actually have my books on the shelf, which very rarely sold, <laughs> and to be surrounded by other books that I would quite like to read and not to be able to do that. And also there were quite long stretches when there wasn't much to do in the shop at all. Um, because I used to work often on the weekends and um, it was quite quiet sometimes. So in any case, also in this little independent bookshop, there were quite a lot of very beautiful greeting cards. Now I've always liked greeting cards and um, Sometimes I just buy them for myself just because I like them so much. Um, and on one of those rainy Sunday afternoons, I was looking through the greeting cards and I had the idea of, because at the same time I was trying to think of ways to make some extra money because I didn't earn very much in the bookshop and the income from the novels had pretty much stopped by then. And I thought, what about... <clears throat> Um, photographing some of my little people and adding some titles and greetings and seeing if they worked as greeting cards and I ran it by the the two women who ran the bookshop the manager and the, the assistant manager one of them was in charge of the greeting cards and she thought it was a great idea because she loved the little people and she thought they were really cute and not just the little people, but some of the tiny animals and old-fashioned toys, which I mentioned in the previous video. So thus began a two-year venture <laughs> in which I photographed the little people in various <clears throat> positions and sets and bought all sorts of crazy things from foodstuffs from the supermarket to photograph them with. Um, utilised all my old enamel wear, old china, um, lots of ribbons and pegs and string and cotton and fabrics and I had a really really fun time cr creating the images um, all in my little tiny studio flat. Um, then came the point where I had to photoshop everything and um, that was a bit more tricky, but I kind of, I kind of got into it, and um, I spent many months then photoshopping the texts and the greetings um, alongside borders, mostly borders of washi tape, um, which uh, which worked really well with the with the letters and the little people, and then. But it was quite challenging because I hadn't used Photoshop before. And then came an even worse part, which was dealing with two different printers and trying to get a grip on the technical side of, of the cards, i.e. the measurements, um, printing interfaces. Um, and I found that a bit soul destroying because I struggle with that side of things. And also it was quite costly because I kept having test cards done and them not really um, being what I wanted and I didn't have much money to play around with at the time. In any case, at the end of about two years, I had some sample cards that I was more or less happy with. The only thing that wasn't great was that the image quality wasn't brilliant because of course I didn't have a proper camera to photograph the little people in the beginning. And also, um, I didn't have a proper lighting set up in my little studio flat, so the images were unfortunately a tiny bit grainy. At that point, I couldn't get, I couldn't cope with re-photographing them all again. In fact, if um, I should have, I should have saved up the money and paid a professional photographer to come and photograph them but that would have meant he'd have to come to my flat because um, of all the setups and all the props and all the little scenes I've made and it would have run into gosh I don't know how many hundreds of pounds hundreds of pounds 
So I was faced with hundreds, I never do things by halves, possibly thousands of images um, and greeting card ideas that actually when printed, um, because they looked fine on a computer screen, of course, but when printed, um, not quite up to, up to scratch. And so when I sent the samples off to um, some card agents, because the greeting card world has agents just like um, the book world, and if you're going to be in any way successful as a greeting card creator, you need an agent and possibly several agents. It's um, it's amazingly complex and you wouldn't think all of this exists just for greeting cards, but in fact there's there's even there are even um, sort of festivals and events and a greeting card association and I really kind of um, shut down at that point. I was a bit overwhelmed by all of the rigmarole involved. In any case, the agents um, didn't like the cards. I don't really know why. Possibly the images weren't sufficiently good quality. And to cut a long story short, I'm left with quite a lot of greeting cards, which I'm happy with, except, as I said, the images aren't great quality sometimes. And now I just use them to give to family or friends. or um, And maybe at some point in the future, someone with the money and the expertise um, will come along and we'll be able to photograph the little people again properly and who knows the cards might be sold. I do believe still that people would love the cards, the little people, the images because nothing exists like it in greeting cards at the moment even though there's such such a range and such imagination um, in greeting cards in shops today. But anyway, I'm going to show you the cards I have. I think I have more or less one of each design left. And I'll show you the little greeting card website I made, which um, is obsolete now, because uh, I couldn't afford to keep it going. Now, i just have another. Mm. So <clears throat> initially, I intended to put the greeting cards on the dining room table and I was going to um, I was going to put them here on my lovely French tablecloth and I got some little pink accessories to um, to show you with them but I realized that um, I can't fit all of them on the table. So I'm going to take you down to the rug and I'm going to lay them out on the rug. So I'll see you in a minute. I'm having the same trouble of getting me in the in the frame and the thing I'm talking about. Um, okay, let me see if I go forward a bit. After massive kerfuffling, um, I've managed to get the cards on something, um, a background 
whereby they show up. Um, before I had them on brown paper, but then I realised whenever I moved around it would it would wrinkle and they would all slide everywhere. And the rug, this rug, they just are lost in that. So without further ado, I'm going to crack on. This, These are some of the key things I use to decorate my cards. So washi tape was invaluable. These three patterns I used so often. They photographed really well. They suited the little people. Um, they were they you could cut it into any shape you wanted to. And sometimes I would enlarge large a little bit. Um, um, sometimes I would enlarge even a tiny bit of the pattern. You see. You see this pattern is um, is little flowers, um, or I would enlarge even even one or two or three or four of these tiny squares, and it would be a completely new pattern. Or I would zoom into this stripe. And that would make a new pattern as well. And as I go through the cards, you'll see um, just just how much variety I managed to get out of washi tape. The other thing was when I packaged them up um, to send them to agents, actually not that this did much good because the eight card agents didn't want them, but I decided to use um, my beloved red and white stripe thread to give a kind of cohesive um, look to them all. And this red and white stripe I paired with brown, kind of chunky ribbed envelopes because I wanted a rustic look for the cards. Also, when I was photographing them, I would often use little, little mini pegs and I would peg them onto the red and white thread. And finally, when I was displaying them, I would use these tiny brown paper um, tags to denote which greeting it was. Now, the brown paper, the brown tags, the red and white thread and the brown pegs all gave a cohesive look to, well, what I was trying to create as a brand, at least I thought it did. And um, one of the things I also did when I was trying to set up the card business was create a flyer um, to be taken or posted to any bookshop I thought might sell the cards or any gift shop. Often independent bookshops were a good place to start because they tended to stock um, cards that weren't necessarily made and distributed, uh, sorry, distributed by big companies. So this was my little flyer. And I had to think up, um, excuse me, I had to think up uh, a title for the cards or a name to call the collection. So in the end, I came up with Grace McLean's Little Things because that encompassed the little people, um, the tiny models and everything else. And the little tagline, was utterly unique greeting cards. Um, this was the font I chose and that font appears on the back of the cards and I used a kind of typewriter font for this bit here. Now on this rather large flyer there are some designs which I don't have anymore, for instance this one, this new home card. I absolutely love that. It was um, another chicken wire and polyfiller, stru polyfiller structure I made, a, a type of house, which I then stuck straw to on the outside and made a little grass ball house. And there's a four poster bed upstairs and a little room downstairs. And I think that's the only design I don't have anymore. And then on the back of the flyer, um, it, w it was just like a big postcard really, there's space for the address and some more cards around the edge. 
Oh, I don't think I have this one anymore either. It says, that was sweet of you. And Walter, I think his name is, one of the little people is standing on some, a toffee, and there's a humbug, and there's some jelly beans playing on the word sweet. And then um, there's a little bit of blurb which says, these exquisite... Well, I was trying to sell myself. And original cards grew out of a lifelong love of miniaturization. They feature handmade figures ranging from a few millimeters to six inches high. If you're interested in viewing the complete range or in ordering a sample, visit gracemcleancards.co.uk or email info at gracemcleancards.co.uk. Well, that website and that email no longer exists. But, hey, you know, it was um, it was a good project, and now I will show you the cards. So first of all, we have humour. This says slightly pickled. It's the sailor doll. And this is a jar of pickled onions. This blue and white tablecloth was the tablecloth I used in the studio. Unfortunately, in the process of using it so often on these cards because it lent itself so well to the kind of rustic, countryfied, <clears throat> slightly fairy tale-like feel, um, it got stained and I had to throw it out. These letters, as in the children's picture book illustration uh, texts, I made are mainly cut out of paper but sometimes fabric and then photoshopped together. I had a whole alphabet, actually multiple alphabets of cut out letters. And then on the back of each card there is an image of a ruler, an old-fashioned wooden ruler which is supposed to show the size of the model. In fact, I couldn't show the size of the model because there's six inches on the ruler and most of the models are six, inch, six inches tall. And if I'd put them here, the text would have been squashed. It does, it's not really apparent on, the, on this card so much, but on some of the others, Oh, okay, so for instance, the bear is actually about eight inches tall. So he would have been up here, taking up all this room, and Clara would have been about here. And then there wouldn't have been room for the text. So in the end, I just had to Photoshop an image of the characters from the front of the card down in this corner. Leave space for my text and kind of just hope I gave the illusion of miniaturization by enclosing this old-fashioned ruler here. So, yeah, to go back to the humour cards, um, the little people lend themselves quite well to humour because they're, they're comical, a lot of their faces and cartoon-like, so we got slightly pickled, drunk and disorderly, um, nuts with the little squirrel toy from the very tiny range of animals and toys I made. Um, does my bottom look big in this with the very plump fairy? Again, um, you can see the little bit of washi tape here. I decided to use speech bubbles. I drew um, the speech bubble motif on a piece of architect's paper and used it again and again, stretching it or squashing it um, in Photoshop in order to put the caption in it. I don't think, I, I've never seen a speech bubble on a greeting card before and I was really pleased when I, um, when I, I came up with that idea. Sorry, I'm just trying to get me in. Um, sorry. Um, so then I would tack the speech bubble onto the card with, um, well, Photoshop a little bit of washi tape on there. And 
those are the humorous cards I've got left. I think there were a few more originally. This is the, the original back of the cards I made. Oh. Um, before I before I put the ruler down the side, it just reads blank inside or the greeting. Then the same font for Grace McLean. Then the name of the character, which is I, I hand wrote in pencil, in again the kind of typewriter script. Then I've got a bit about me, a novelist who lives in London, um, always loved miniaturization, made these figures modeled with toothpicks and they range from a few millimeters to six inches high and my websites. Um, later, that was modified into Grace McLean's Little Things, then the name of the character, the sailor, copyright, and the same blurb, except also other artwork, including picture books, starring the little people can be seen at the two websites. And I decided to write that blurb in pencil typewriter script and also include the information about whether the card was blank. So that the whole card had a handwritten feel and not a kind of industrially processed look at all. So they're the humorous cards. Um, often on long Sunday afternoons in the bookshop, I would browse through the greeting cards and kind of get inspiration for, for captions from, from lots of the cards we had. Then I have a range of cards um, with kind of congratulations and good luck messages. This one is Skip just holding a gold star. Then there's Skip with a caption of you did it. The you did it is simply crayon and felt tip letters. Then there's Patty with again a washi tape border. Again, um, much enlarged this time and a spotted washi tape um, tag attaching a piece of paper with Let's Dance written on it. And then we have Let's Party with the paper, let paper and fabric cutout letters and Stan doing a kind of country jig on the front. And also in the same kind of um, section, there are some leaving cards. So there's Sorry to See You Go with a picture of Little Pixie from the story Where's My Story, um, the signpost, the path and his knapsack off to seek his fortune. Um, there's also a good luck version of that card with a little paper cloud attached with a spotty piece of washi tape and curling red felt tip words. And then there is a sorry to see you go um, crayon and felt tip pen text with another picture from the Where's My Story book, this time of Little Pixie and the old lady who lived in a shoe. And all of the little children and the old lady are supposed to be sorry to see Little Pixie go. He's off on his travels again with his knapsack. Then we've got um, a Get Well series of cards and I particularly love one of these which is Wee Willy Winky who I thought looked kind of ill because of his sleeping cap and his night nighty, nighty? Um, nightshirt um, and, and could, could be um, kind of sick in bed and I made this little set wallpapering a piece of cardboard <clears throat> and uh, putting a waste paper basket with his tissues there, little bed, book, toilet roll and a little card and again felt tip pen, fabric and paper letters attached on a strip of paper with washi tape and I really love that card. I would love to get that card if I was ill and I think other people would. Then we've got Little Pete from the Duckworth series um, in his pyjamas 
with Get Well Soon in big letters. We've got Bruni Baxter with Get Well Soon because who doesn't want a kind of teddy bear or a hug when, they, when they're not very well? Well, actually quite a lot of people. But um, then we've got Little Jim looking all flushed and feverish in his pyjamas um, and simple blue coloured pencil letters and a little bit of washi tape which is peach and I felt looked a bit like a plaster so I stuck that here. This, sorry, this photo um, actually comes from the picture book um, Mr Trushenko the toy maker. This is when little Jim is ill in bed, or he's the beggar boy in that story. Then we've got Greta with a real daisy, holding a real daisy as a get well posy. And we've got Wee Willy Winky with get well soon. We've got Flop the rabbit. And we've got little Michael with his hot water bottle, just removing his thumb from his mouth after sucking it. And now we have a series of um, blank cards. Initially I wasn't sure what shape to make these cards. Um, I really like square greeting cards but according to one of the ladies in the bookshop who bought the greeting cards for the bookshop, the best size, sorry, the best shape was rectangle because that fitted most card stands. So I did mostly rectangle sizes, but I also thought, because I just love square greeting cards and I thought I could make some nice designs on square greeting cards, I would experiment with square with squares as well. So this range of cards are these range of cards are blank and apparently blank card we sold the most blank cards in the bookshop. So I felt these might be the most saleable because they're so versatile. So we've got um, Lily on a pink gingham background. We've got Hans, I think that's his name, on a Czech background. And this is actually the patchwork quilt my mum made for me and is always on my bed, it's on my bed now. And we made, she made this patchwork quilt from scraps of fabric left over after we clothed all of the little people. So it's apt that it's come back to join a little person again here as a background. In fact, I use the patchwork quilt so many times on these greeting cards, it's sort of infinitely um, usable. Here it is again behind Bo Peep and photographing her in the middle of a square like this gives a lovely border of the other fabrics. Um, then we have, we have a, um, a plain white card with one of the very tiny miniatures on it, Dinah, and the caption, Hi Doll. That shouldn't actually be in the blank cards, that should be in the greetings, so I'll put that here. We've got one of the seven dwarves, I think Simeon, on a, sp again, the patchwork quilt in the background. Um, we have Jasmine on a very small blue printed fabric. We've got Miss Mary Banks on the patchwork quilt again. And although you can't really, sorry, or, and although you can't really tell this, um, on this on this video, the resolution isn't great on these photographs and it's such a shame because if they were photographed professionally, I think they would make exquisite greeting cards I would certainly buy them and I think a lot of other people would but maybe that's me just being blind to my own work and how it kind of would really um, go down in the real world. I certainly think these these cards would appeal more to women but then you know I had to make what I loved and was inspired by. Then we've got Lottie. Lottie again on a piece of the patchwork quilt. We've got Maria on another square of the patchwork quilt. We have Kaczynski. What was her name? Izzy. Izzy Kaczynski. Yes, we've got Izzy 
she's, she comes into the Duckworth um, series of models. We've got the little old woman. Another high doll caption. Oh, there's a little mark on this card. Um, with Beth, I think her name was. And this should not be with the blank cards, but with the greeting cards. We've got Mrs. Pugh. On the patchwork quilt. We've got Jethro on the patchwork quilt, one of the seven dwarves. We have Little Pete on the patchwork quilt. I taped this to my wall, that's why um, there's some washi tape here. We have Ivan, Vasily, no Ivan, Ivan on the patchwork quilt. We've got Wee Willy Winky on the patchwork quilt. We've got the Sailor on the patchwork quilt. And Jim on the patchwork quilt. I really like the idea of having um, lots of little ranges of cards within the whole collection. So within Grace McLean's Little Things there could be, I thought this could be a whole range called Patchwork. And um, the ideas, yeah, lots and lots of ideas that never came to anything. There's the washerwoman on the patchwork quilt. There's the jailer on the patchwork quilt. Mr. Milton on the patchwork quilt. And we're back to Lily. These were the, these were the smallest greeting cards I made. And I think um, I talked to the lady in the bookshop and she said we could possibly sell these for 175 or maximum two pound. Then we have some other blank greeting cards. You can see how brilliantly the um, the washi tape came in. Came. <sighs> Sorry, I said I was tired today. You can see how useful the washi tape was because this is just a tiny edge of of the washi tape, and yet it looks like a real border, and it works perfectly with the little models. This is a piece of um, kind of magic tape, cello tape, which is meant to be invisible, but when photographed has a lovely translucent quality. And I use this so often. I wanted um, a kind of understate, understated simplicity to the cards. I don't really like glitter and lots of bright colors. And so I often photographed paper on paper with things like magic tape and a very subtle border. Here's Little Pixie. I think this card could be used for so many things and um, is really versatile. Then we've got Little Pixie on my tablecloth with a ruler. Um, I was toying around with a caption like guess how much I love you but it didn't really quite work or I, or I can't measure um, how I feel about you. It never really worked so I just thought it worked as a blank card and I really like the white space at the top and the border. This was just um, a white sheet of paper I would put behind. Well, it was like a curve of paper and then I put the tablecloth on the bottom. Here is Mavis, one of my all-time favorite little ca characters, looking thoughtful, maybe pensive and one of the the main idea for these empty speech bubbles was so that people could actually write something in there if they bought the card. Then we've got a blank card of Little Pixie in his kitchen with bordered by two types of washi tape or paper tape. Um, again, he's looking thoughtful, so this could be a kind of miss you card or thinking of you card. It could even be a hope you're settling into your new home card. Now we have Little Pixie photographed a back against a background um, that I found in a page from a book I bought in Pimpernel and Partners, which is was a little shop, um, a kind of antique shop I loved on the New King's Road. And I thought the monochrome pictures and text and even the colour of the antique, the old paper, worked so well with the little people and provided a really lovely background. 
this is a similar idea with, um, I think it's Pipkin, against a separate page, uh, a different page from another book, I think that I also got from Pimpernel and Partners, and this has, has the word meadow in the background and the wood, it's a map, and I thought the kind of, the rustic and sylvan themes worked really well with the pixies and elves. The background for this card and, oh, this background is actually a, a tin I got in Pimpernel and Partners. Um, so little John is standing against a really, really cool old French tin, which I've got in my kitchen. The background for this card, which is flanked by two white borders, is a green and white check tablecloth. And I don't know if you can see, it's not the spines of Ladybird books, but the other edges. I really like the bright colours and I love Ladybird books and I thought both of them worked really well with Jinx. Then we have Gilbert standing against the same background that Pipkin was a minute ago, the map of the wood and the meadow from the old book. We've got another blank card with Maisie and an empty speech bubble for someone to write in and a little bit of washi tape which is actually, although you can't see it, oh, it's lousy focusing on this phone, um, which is actually this this paper tape but tinted in Photoshop to so that it's it's got a green, a kind of spring green colour. They were so uh, editable. There's a blank card with Wee Willy Winky holding onto a piece of twine and his shadow appearing on the sweep of paper behind him. Um, I thought about captioning this card hold on or hang on or something but in the end I thought just leave it blank and let someone interpret it their own way. Then this is, I was going to caption this The Great Escape. Um, it's little Pete in a jar and Skip kind of riding the milk jug cow and um, I, can't, I can never remember his name, Pippin looking on, but anyway they're rescuing little Pete from the jar and again I thought about captioning it something like um, a friend in need, you know, dot 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 is a friend indeed or um, I'm here if you're in a scrape or um, hang on I'll get you out or something like that but in the end I think blank worked best then there's Bruni Baxter with a blank speech bubble and a little piece of magic tape there's the chef against another really beautiful though very rusty old tin from um, from Pimpernel and Partners which is in my kitchen there's Little Pixie with a blank speech bubble and some red and white spotted washi or paper tape which works well I think with his red cap and white fleecy jerkin. There's um, the little baby, the kind of perfect baby and a blank bubble. There's the tiny pixie I made and another blank bubble. What was his name? Just tiny pixie maybe. There's Carrie, the little rag doll, the kind of um, rag doll from the Wild West, with this time, this is tracing paper or, or architect's paper, um, a cloud and a, or a sort of thought bubble cut out of it and tinted a little bit darker in Photoshop and I thought someone could put their own greeting in there. Here is Alfred Witt. Sorry, it's got sunny and it's harder for you to see the cards. Alfred Witt. Um, against a page from another book from Pimpernel, Pimpernel and Partners and I thought the cross-section of the plant in the background and the text would work well with his kind of arable farmer nature. There are three tiny pixies against 
the ends of Ladybird books again. There's Flop with a blank speech bubble. There, there's Apple Drop and Bilberry in a matchbox. And I thought on my blue and white check tablecloth, and I thought about titling this um, New Home or Hope, Hope Your Move Went Well or something like that. But then I thought I would just leave it, leave it blank. There's one of my favourite little setups I made was the blue and white enamel, one of the blue and white enamel mugs I had, the blue and white check tablecloth and some little people standing beside. This time it's Lottie and Jim hugging one, um, one another and the mug is filled with raspberries, blackberries and blueberries. Then there's Wee Willy Winky in, the, in a jar pondering how to get out. There's Alice and Jim with an apple on the tablecloth. There is the jailer against a very beautiful old print I found in a book from Pimpernel and Partners. There's simply an illustration from the picture book, Little Old Lady Pie featuring the bear. It was one of the the illustrations that worked best, that kind of really did look like uh, a picture taken from a children's book. Um, there's Mr Hawthorne against another beautiful illustration from one of the antique books from Pimple and Partners. There's Hans against the cover of the book from Pimpernel and Partners, The Hedgerow, which, from which I took all of the kind of the plant-based and countryside themed backgrounds. There's Mrs. Deadly, Miss Deadly Night, Nightshade against the same tin that the baker was against. And then we are back to Little Pixie again. So there's the batch of rectangular blank cards. Now we move on to the large square blank cards and these actually don't feature the little people at all um, or any of my, my miniatures but um, these are some, these are the artwork I made when I was um, mostly in school but this was a little bit later, say 23 or something, no 22. So there's a Savoy cabbage um, I actually don't know who would buy a card with a Savoy cabbage on, but anyway, there's a pen and ink cat, which would probably sell really well because cats sell very well. There's a pencil baby bunny rabbit, which would probably also sell well. There's a close up of some sardines I painted or drew with ink, pen and ink on tracing paper or architect's paper, which I really love because it kind of feels scrunchy and I don't know, just to me captures the kind of sardine texture and taste. There's a pencil Savoy cabbage. Um, this was how the Savoy was before I painted it. There's another baby rabbit in pencil on paper. There's a close up of a fish watercolor and there's another pen and ink cat scratching himself. There was a series of three. Um, then the last in the blank cards are also large square cards and these are some of my favourites. There's Mavis on a jar of honey on my blue and white tablecloth. There's the farmer's wife with a plate of crumpets and melting butter and a jar of wild flowers on my tablecloth. I think I might have to draw the curtains in a minute because the sun is making this hard for you to see. Um, it was also pretty difficult getting photographing the crumpets um, with the butter just melting. I, I, ate, I went through a lot of crumpets and butter in the process of getting this photograph. There is Gwendolyn, one of the larger models I made. I don't think I showed you her, or maybe I did. Uh, no, Guinevere, I'm sorry, Guinevere, against um, the middle panel of a cushion I had. 
Um, there, there's Lily and Harvey against my beautiful anthropology, is it a soup dish? I'm not sure. Filled with strawberries and squirty cream. I regret to this day not whipping real cream because I hate the look of squirty cream. But at that time I didn't um, think. Then there's Dinah, one of the larger models, against my cotton dress. I have a cotton dress from Kath Kidston. Um, and up close, this is the, the fabric. There's Ruby against another cushion cover I used to have. And a close-up of Guinevere against the same cushion. And there... Oh yes, and there's Lucy against the background which is another cushion cover that I used to have. So I think that is, those are all of the large blank cards. So I'll just put these out of the way. Congratulations, leading cards, um, humor, blank cards. And get well cards. And I can move you over here a bit. Okay, so now we have Christmas cards. I'm missing a couple of these. I don't know where they are and I can't quite remember. One of the ones I'm, I'm missing is similar to that. So it's Father Christmas surrounded by lots of little children with wallpaper in the background and gold stars and carpet on the floor and Christmas presents in the far corner here. Um, just a kind of slightly different arrangement. I like the way the shadows form on the back of the wall here. And then we have two Christmas cards which are illustrations taken from Greta the Great, the storybook Greta the Great, whereby um, when I made the snow scene with the Scandinavian house. So that's a sunny scene. And that's a moonlit scene. And the letters are red paper, I think. No, red, red felt tip. And the C is red paper with white stars on it. And that says a very Merry Christmas. And that's blank. Um, this is possibly my favourite greeting card of all. This is a new home card. I really love the simple letters. I think, yes, they were just pe drawn in pencil. I drew them in pencil and then went over them quite faintly in different colour pens and crayons. And this is a still, uh, it is one of the illustrations from Little Old Lady Pie and it shows Clara and the bear outside Clara's cottage. I just love everything about it. I know it's really twee with the little white fence and the gate, um, picket fence is it? And the little path with, uh, any, anyway. I like it. And then we have an illustration from the scrapbook field where Jess is leaning on the gate. And Oh yeah, I had to change her face back to a smiley one for this card because it says new home. And in the story she was sad in this picture. Um, again, the, um, the, cap, the greeting is fixed in inverted commas with paper tape. Red spot this time. This, this card, this phone is just not picking up anything, is it? Um, and the font is, 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 why is it? Yeah. Anyway, so then we've got new home. This is not quite so su successful because the photograph is too dark. It's Little Pixie's tree house. It's his front door with the bottle of milk and his bell. Then we've got, again, the photo's a little bit too dark. An aerial view of Sylvie's cottage from the scrapbook field. Um, we've got, I, I really like this one. This is Dennis the dragon. 
in the little cardboard castle I made for him. The whole thing is only about um, that tall. And it says new home. Then we've got, oh yes, little Pixie in his kitchen. And an elongated picture of Clara's cottage from Little Old Lady Pie. And then we have a card which, which is the Bears Cave from Little Old Lady Pie on the front. And on the back it's the same cave. So it would be the type of card whereby you open it out and it sits on the shelf like that. And that's also a new home card. A new home cards. And then we have kind of miscellaneous greeting cards. So we've got um, Little Pixie writing a letter and looking at an old photograph and the caption thinking of you and fabric for the wallpaper in the background. We've got Mavis sitting on her jar of honey and the caption hi honey in in um, kind of um, in paper let cut out letters. We've got Polly, um, one of the very tiny dolls. I don't think I actually um, I don't think I loaded that photograph onto the website um, for up in the nursery, but she was one of the best rag dolls I made. And pencil letters saying hi doll. And then we've got Wilbur, my very tiny pig that I've had um, since I made him when I was about 10 or 11. And in pencil and imperfect letters, small but perfectly formed. I don't know where I first heard that phrase, but... Um, Small but perfectly formed, but anyway, I like it. And I think Wilbur is perfectly formed, so it's good. So those are the big square greeting cards. Then we've got um, three little square greeting cards. I've already showed you, I've already shown you Dinah. So then we have another greeting card, which is Raggedy Ann, the tiny ragdoll, and pencil letters saying hi doll. It was quite important when I was um, making these cards to match different fonts to um, the different characters, and I spent quite a long time um, kind of experimenting and, and seeing which kind of fonts looked best, or I thought looked best. Here is What's It or Thing of Me photoshopped onto a card twice and the speech bowl saying you're swell in pencil letters and some of my favorite um, washi or paper tape here which was I forget which color it was it was silver white and some other color either blue or green but because I could Photoshop it to become a range of colors um, I forgot what the original color of the paper tape was and I don't have any more of it I like the caption on this card you as well. <clears throat> then there's the same card, Lottie and Jim, and an enamel mug full of berries, and little cut out paper let letters saying, I love you very much. There's Sally the giraffe and Maisie, and Sally is saying in yellow crayon letters, hi there. Mavis, looking a bit tentative, saying, oops. Clarence the Clown looking down at mouth and the caption, sorry. Clarence with red crayon letters saying, don't be sad. Blue, the pixie, with pale blue pencil letters saying, don't be blue. Ooh. Um, Alice and Jim next to an apple and jolly paper letters saying apple of my eye i really like the um the paper i used for this pea here it's a very kind of pale pink and apple green floral 
and there's also stripey um, I like the stripey letters as well again all the colors of the font were very carefully chosen to match with the colors in the card for instance um, the yellow of the Y matching with Alice's cardigan because of the cellophane on these cards it's not that easy for you to see I guess um, you you are so sweet with oops coming out of the cellophane with um, Michael on a toffee hello sweetie with Bilberry I think it's Bilberry I can't remember on another toffee he's my smallest model I've ever made I mean the smallest person I've ever made and then Maisie simply saying hello with the blue white and silver spotty paper tape again then we've got um, some Valentine's and anniversary cards um, I'm not sure how well these work and if indeed anyone would have bought these but we've got Greta and Algie next to a bowl of strawberries and cream and the word strawberries and cream at the top we've got Greta's mum and dad <laughs> um, on a chopping board with Tabasco sauce and some chilies and Greta's dad is presenting Greta's mum with a bouquet of flowers and the saucy letters at the top say I think you're hot then this is a really pretty card I think we've got um we've got oh Lily and Harvey and the bowl of strawberries and cream in the tablecloth and then these kind of jeweled blues and reds and green colors color letters saying we go together like strawberries and cream I think I'll include some photographs um, or close-up good quality images of some of the cards in this video just so that you can see all the paper letters which just aren't coming out on the phone camera then we've got um, Clara and one of the um, shoemakers and the caption let's grow old together we've got Jethro holding a red Fimo rose saying be mine we've got Mavis and the same rose holding it coyly behind her back also saying be mine we've got um, I think it's Nathaniel um, holding a little card that says you're just my type and the pencil letters I drew here were in lots of different fonts playing on the word type we've got Mrs Partridge walking across my tea towel and on the chopping board behind her a motley crew of um, Stan Hans and some of the seven dwarves and Ernie or no Jem and Gilbert uh, kind of admiring her and the caption hot stuff is that card in bad taste I don't know I don't know I thought it was okay um, we go together perfectly with Lily and Harvey and Cla Tara sorry Tara holding a rose saying be mine with a kind of sweet smile now there are the only two categories of cards left there are the new new baby cards which I think a lot of these little models work really well for there's um, a baby boy with the little toy blue horse and again an enlarged bit of paper tape this time a blue stripe down the side I could modify these colors in Photoshop so it could be blue it could be pink it could be green we've got the little baby bear in the blue romper again I don't think this was included in the up in the nursery video but this little bear was made at the same time as the other old-fashioned toys and blue crayon letters saying a baby boy um, I was able to Photoshop the image to make the bear a dark chocolate brown and to make the all-in-one suit pink instead oh no actually I think what I did was um, I 
I made another final, no, I paint, I painted the body. I think I painted the original body pink. Um, so now we have a chocolate color beer in a pink romper suit and pink paper tape down the side and pale pink crayon letters saying a baby girl. We've got baby boy with bright colorful paper letters. We've got new arrival with, um, I can't remember if I called him Archie or William. Um, and, oh, I, I like this one in particular, a baby girl with, with Nell, the little elephant, and an enlarged edge of some paper tape Photoshop to become pastel pink down the side. And I also think Humpty works really well in, in this range um, with new arrivals. So this could be for a boy or a girl. And then we've got the chocolate color baby girl baby bear again with paper letters this time. And then the last range of cards I have are happy birthday cards. This one is uh, is um, pale red, green and yellow crayon letters. Um, sorry about the battery running out then. I was just going to show you the birthday cards and to save time I thought I would just um, put them on the table here. So here they are, all of the birthday cards. So here they are, all the birthday cards. Um, I've just got one square design and um, quite a few photographs. I bought a fairy cake and put and lit the can lit a candle on the top of it. And this is Shabana, draped kind of doll's house wallpaper behind it and took the photo. I did the same with Ben and put different wallpaper behind and took a chocolate fairy cake for a birthday card for a boy instead. I got blue shiny wrapping paper with stars, I don't know if you can see that for the background and bought a little party hat and made a, made a party layout for Harvey and um, that's the other alternative to that card and with a similar, with the same background I used Skip. Um, I used the big group of characters from Where's My Story for another happy birthday idea and these big kind of bobbles around the edge are actually just really enlarged um, paper tape or washi tape. Uh, the same tape actually that's bordering it, bordering the image. Um, then we've got various characters, Greta, Algy, the fairy whose caption reads have a magical birthday. Um, we've got Alice. Again, the poor quality of the photographs really shows up on the enlarged pictures like that. We've got Jim. I like Jim's birthday card. Um, we've got um, Fritz. Um, the penguin, have a cool birthday. Happy birthday doll from Dinah. And so that is the end of the greeting cards. Um, what I thought I would just do to finish off is show you the website I made for the greeting cards. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. I'll just show it to you on my laptop. It had a really pretty home page and if ever the greeting cards do take off in the future maybe I could use this website idea again. So I'll just show you on my laptop. So for the home page, I had the same font in a pale kind of pencil-y brown ink colour. I think I drew it in brown ink, Grace McLean cards, and then the email address. I had a little wild strawberry plant, which is which is actually um, a logo that appears on my novel website, the, the website about my books. I had sample images of the back of the cards to show the ruler and the little people. And then I photographed that very old um, photograph rack that I bought in Pimpernel and Partners, the old iron photograph rack. 
and superimposed and photoshopped images of the cards over the top and hand wrote the categories at the side. For instance, this is about, so you can read a bit about how the cards came to be. Then there are thank you cards, new home cards, celebration cards, leaving cards, um, drawings, new baby, Christmas surfaces, um, buttercups. You can see that I had a few additional categories at this point which I um, honed down later. Romance, patchwork, get well, humour, birthday. The buttercup cards were quite interesting and I really hoped that um, they would work out. But the idea was I photographed the surrounding of an antique photograph from an antique photograph album. Um, let me see if I can bring you any closer in. Um, or I just bring the laptop up. And this surround, this antique surrounding of a photograph had little buttercups taped to it. I thought it was so lovely. And in, I cut out the inside on Photoshop and then superimposed images, sort of quasi-portraits of the little people into the space and that was going to be the idea for a, another series of greeting cards. Um, so here were the buttercup cards. And here I've got the the photograph album. Um, I'm not sure if it was velvet cover or leather, leather cover. That the antique photograph album, the word buttercups, and then the page reproduced again and again with different characters and different backgrounds. So there were quite a lot of these, and I think that some of them in particular worked very well. For instance. Let me see if I can get you close. For instance, um, this is this is Mother Cherry, and she's against an antique photograph of foliage and blossoms, and then that's put behind the kind of antique photo surround. Sorry about that. That's that beeping. And then I think Mr. Hawthorne works really well as, with the antique picture behind him. Um, the wallpaper and fabric backgrounds work reasonably well. Um, I'm just trying to find another. I think Julia looks rather rather swell in her portrait, in her photo frame. Um, and Mrs. Partridge and Mr. John Bull. So that was the Buttercup series. Then we have Patchwork. I wonder if I can go to this link. No, I have to click it in here. I'm not sure why I've got the word humour here and a penny, because this is the Patchwork page. But anyway, you can see that those little Patchwork cards look quite charming with the brown envelopes. And then we've got affection. I can't quite remember what that category is. I guess it's greetings with a kind of affectionate message. Yeah, so we've got apple of my eye. I love you very much. And for this um, affection greeting page, I had a little wildflower there. Ahoy. I think I've lost that card. I used to ask to a special friend. Sorry, let me just turn the beeping. We've got a card saying, I love hanging out with you. Two little dwarves hung by pegs on a line. We've got Raggedy Ann with the word hug above her. Um, Sing me or what's it just with the word hello, which I like. We've got hang in there. A very small note to say, it's great to catch up with Ernie and Jem. Uh, so quite a few that I've lost, actually, or given away. Then we've got the surfaces card, 
cards. Then we've got drawn cards and I can see that I've lost quite a few of these. The radishes, the peppers, lemons, pomegranates, tomatoes, cross section of a tomato, chimpanzee, um, hen, shrimps, oh, cows, more hens, cosmos, storm, piece of wood, wildflowers, iris, Vincent's hands clasped in prayer, Iris, oh, and then a whole series of mother and baby cards, which were just taken from my A-level artwork to do with, um, the, which was inspired by the word comfort, and I took that to focus on breastfeeding. Then, here's the humour. Oh yes, I forgot this one. Nice bit of crumpet. <laughs> mm, I'm not sure if that's very PC really. Um, this card says nice bit of crumpet and it's got the farmer's wife and a plate of crumpets behind her. We've got thanks for a great night. Um, does one's bottom look big in this with the emperor from the emperor's new clothes? Then We have some more Christmas cards. Um, oh, there's the other group that I couldn't show you earlier. Father Christmas with a group of children. Oh, and a close-up of Harvey and Jim opening Christmas presents. Um, oh, and of course the Father Christmas card with Father Christmas from the Pepsi or the Coca-Cola advert. Oh, and um, we've got a scene from Mr. Trishenko, the toy maker, <laughs> saying a very Merry Christmas. Yep, so there are a few more than I, than I have now. Um, affection and greeting. I think I still have most of these. I don't have hardly any thank you cards now. I must have given them all away. But I think they would have sold reasonably well because thank you is a very popular... Oh, sorry. Thank you is a very popular card. I've got a thistle as the logo for this page. I've got Clara and the bear when the bear is carrying her sticks and she's carrying his bucket of berries. I've got Primrose the rabbit saying thank you. I've got Alice saying thank you. I've got Squirrel clutching his nut saying thank you. Nut, singular. <laughs> Sorry. I've got Mavis clutching little 112 scale sunflowers saying thank you. I've got Tara clutching final flowers saying thank you. Jim holding real daisies and buttercups saying thank you. Um, and Blue, the pixie, holding some wildflowers saying thank you. Then we have, you can see why it took me a couple of years to, <laughs> to design and make all of these because there's simply so many. Um, celebration page with little, little stars around it. Um, oh, I, the only cards I didn't show you earlier were a card saying ace with Gilbert holding an ace of diamonds and a congratulations message with Patty and I can't remember the other dog's name doing a little jig. I think I've shown you all the get well cards. Oh yes, one I didn't show you I don't think was the fairy saying get well soon waving her magic wand to make the recipient better. Oh, get well soon old chap featuring Wee Willy Winky. Um, oh, and get well soon with the, the man <clears throat> um, that I term a pinch of snuff. 
Oh, and then a get well hug with a photograph from the storybook When the Lights Went Out featuring Lucy and Great Aunt Rose. I think I've shown you all the birthday, new baby cards, blank cards, new home, anniversary, surfaces, patchwork, and that's that. And just to finish off this video about the cards, I thought I would give you a quick look at all the paper letters I cut out. This is full of tiny paper letters. These are the titles for the back of the cards, um, trying out different fonts, greetings, handwritten greetings, the names of the models which I put on the back of the card, um, the bit of blurb. Um, I actually measured each of the models at one point because I thought I would be able to place them accurately against the brown, um, against the photograph of the wooden ruler. Here are the paper tapes. These are the ones I photoshopped onto the corners of images. Here's the speech bubble, the speech bubble. Um, the long bits of paper tape went down the sides of images. Here's the font I decided on for Grace McLean after much trial and error. Oh, they are the titles for the cards website. These are actually pieces of writing that I photographed for the children's stories. Um, and here are some of the paper letters I cut out or the surrounding parts of them. Oh, here's the where I experimented with the title for The Night the Moon Went Out with chalk on some black card. And yeah, that's about it. And there's a thought bubble. So on that note, um, let me turn this round. Can't turn it round. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Um, and hey, if you want a greeting card, let me know. I've got literally hundreds of them. Hi everyone, today I thought I would show you, um, hi people, hello people. I just came across this bit of paper which is full of ideas for more greeting cards. It says patterned tissue paper, old paint chipped wood, red vertical lines on balance books, rusty keys, small cardboard boxes, typewriter type, motifs from fairy stories, pins, scraps of paper pinned to the page, um, nice watercolour and varied colour papers, spines, jackets of old books, um, walnut shells, cards, lace, necklaces, old plates, water bubbled paper, tea water, or water stained paper, um, scraps of old type, old bulldog clips, matches, burnt and whole, beautiful fabrics, linens, gauzes, pebbles, um, old spools of cotton, old wooden toys boxes. Good job I stopped where I did really. <laughs>